Hello, my excellent friends. Today, I want to talk to you about how now you can have alerts for your fourth wall store on your live stream, courtesy of StreamerBot. I'm going to give you a tutorial today on how to actually set all of that up. First of all, let me say, this isn't a sponsored video at all. Fourth Wall has not sponsored this whatsoever, but I will say that I really love their quality of products. I have tried many different merch stores from Streamlabs, Stream Elements, I even use Teespring, and none of them have ever really held up when it came to multiple washes. I highly recommend looking into Fourth Wall. They have more than just merch available. They have subscription tiers that you can also provide and many other useful features and even more coming. So with that quick little bit out of the way, let me show you how you can now set up an alert with StreamerBot or Fourth Wall. So the first thing you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need to go to the StreamerBot website, which is streamer.bot. Once you are there, if you go to the top right corner, you will see that there's a place for you to log in. And what you're gonna do is log in with your Discord. Log in with your Discord, and authorize. Once you have done that, you can then click on your icon, that is your Discord icon, and you can go down to settings. Once the settings have popped up, you'll notice that there are a few different things that you can actually webhook, including Ko-Fi, Patreon, Shopify, and Fourth Wall. Now, in order to enable the Fourth Wall integration, you're going to need to also log in to the Fourth Wall website. Once you've logged into your fourth wall website, you'll need to drop down to where it says settings and go over to where it says for developers, which is at the very bottom. When you go to the developer settings, you'll notice that there's two different options. There's create an API user and there's create a webhook. For StreamerBot, we are going to use the create a webhook. Now what you're gonna do when you create this webhook is you're going to take the information for the fourth wall webhook URL on your streamer bot. You will copy that information and then place it into the URL. On this dropdown, you will be choosing all the events you want to have pop up on your live stream. We can have order placed, order updated, product offered, and so many other things. You can even use the donation feature and use this as your method of donations. After you've connected that URL, at the very bottom, the webhooks will be signed with a secret token. So you will take this secret token that's at the bottom. You will copy that and go back to the StreamerBot website. You will put that into where it says fourth wall webhook secret. Once you have connected the two of them, then you can go ahead and do a test event. Once you've established the connection between the two websites, you're gonna need to go to your StreamerBot on your computer. So with your StreamerBot brought up, you will need to go to where it says integrations. When you go on here, you'll notice there is nothing here specifically for fourth wall. What you're gonna do is go to the streamer.bot website. Once you click on the StreamerBot website, you'll need to make sure you are logging in just like you did with the StreamerBot website. Once you are logged in, you're pretty much set to go. However, you do still need to set up actions to make sure that you are having something happen. I'm gonna create a test, so that way I can run a action test to see what variables are going to be available to me so that way I can use them for GDI text, for images, for the things I need to show on my stream that somebody has purchased something from my fourth wall. So here I'm just creating one that's called test and fourth wall, and I'm just gonna hit OK. In the triggers, since we are connected, you would come down to integrations, and then there it should be a fourth wall that appears. If the fourth wall integration doesn't show up in your dropdown on StreamerBot, give it a few minutes. If it doesn't appear after a few minutes, close down StreamerBot. Open it back up, that should refresh it to bring it up. Give it a few minutes, it does take time for the StreamerBot website to recognize the integration and send it to your instance of StreamerBot. So in the triggers, we are doing integrations and fourth wall. Here we can choose what we want to work with. Now, the first thing I'm gonna focus on is the order place. This is, for me, the most important. So now that I have that whenever an order is placed through fourth wall, something's going to trigger. What I'm gonna do next 
is I'm going to go to my action cues. I'm going to go to history and have that up. The next thing we need to do is run a test action. Now, if you've already ran a test action off of the fourth wall site, there should be something available on the streamer bot site to replay the test that you've done. If not, you'll need to go to the fourth wall site and you will need to test the action there. Once you have ran a test, then you will have the ability to replay that action repeatedly as many times as you need from the streamer bot website, as well as the trigger you have put in by right clicking and hitting test. Then when we go back to our streamer bot, you'll notice that the product order has been completed. If you right click and inspect variables when queued, this will now show you every variable that fourth wall sends that you can use to create your alert. Now, I am gonna copy this and I'm going to put it on my website under the free tools and downloads that I provide for my YouTube tutorials. This way you can copy it and then you can have a list of what those variables are at any given point. So that way you know what you're working with. So what you're gonna notice with this test is that when it comes to the username, it's gonna say supporter username, but this is the variable I wanna use to acknowledge the person who purchased the product. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this text, and then I'm gonna start setting up some sub actions. So the first thing I'm gonna do OBS sources, set GDI text. Now in my OBS, I set a one scene just for fourth wall. And this is a an alert that I'm building and using as a nested scene to put into all my other scenes. So in my alert for fourth wall, I have where I have the name of the person who ordered it and what product. So here we're going to choose the name. I'm going to do percent sign. I'm going to paste and percent sign. This way, my text will always come up with their name. If you want to grab the image of the product that they have purchased, what you're going to want to do is come down and here you can see that the, the name is right here. So you can use this for GDI text. But if you're looking for the image itself, it's going to be on the variance, the image, and then it's going to give you a link. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy this variable. We're gonna go to our sub actions, go to OBS, sources, set browser source URL. Again, I'm gonna choose my scene that's fourth wall. And here I also have a browser source I put up called product image. And what we'll need to do here is the similar thing, just percent sign, paste in the variable name and percent sign. This way, whatever that URL is, it's going to show the product that the person ordered every single time. So now we have who ordered and what it looks like that they ordered. Then we can also add things like, hey, what's the shirt name? Like if they ordered a shirt, cool, here it is. The name of it is new t-shirt. Additionally, if, you if there's a message from your supporter and you want to include that, you will be able to by using this variable here. But this has a whole host of different variables you can use. So the nice thing about having all these various variables available to you is that with StreamerBot, you have the ability to go to core, file IO, and write to file, which means you could then take the information you want, write it as a text file, and save that information in case you want to keep your own track of receipts. So I've already created my alert for fourth wall. I have supplied an image that I've put together, and then I've also added the variables I want to make sure that it shows up how I want it to. So I just want to give a quick demonstration of how mine looks. When the alert goes off, it looks like this. Ta-da! They ordered a new shirt with a smiley face. Woo! Yay! And that was all built in OBS and StreamerBot. Now let me show you how I set that up. So in here, you'll see that I have the order placed as the trigger. Down here, I will set the browser source URL and I set it to that variable, as well as I have their name set to the variable that supplies their name and the name of the product order with that variable. In here, I have where if a status message were to be were to be present, where if somebody sent a message along with purchasing something, I have another 
action that gets triggered in which I have where fourth malt wall message is added will do a set what the message was and then it will move out from the, the alert the message with the alert so it's still attached. Then I also have where it comes on screen. This is a scene filter state. This is what causes it to spin on screen and do the animation. So when it comes to setting up how I've put together my fourth wall alerts, down here I have created a folder which everything is basically combined into. So I have the browser source with the product image in it. I have the, the GDI text name, the GDI text product ordered, and the image that I created, the background that kind of ties it all together. And then I have this message alert. Now to make sure it triggers all together, if I go over to here on my scene and click filters, you'll see that I have these four animations set up. So the order on screen is actually what triggers all of this. So here I have set up where it needs to sit, how long it takes to come on screen. The other couple options I have because of the move transition plugin, I have where it will show at the start of the movement, then it will do at the next move once this is over is do the order hold animate. And on the order hold animate, this takes about eight seconds to go from a negative 10 degrees to 10 degrees rotation as seen here. I don't need to do anything with the visibility yet. And then I have once this move is over, I do the order off. In which case the order off takes two seconds. It does a huge spin. And then at the end of the movement, I hide that source. And then I have where there's the order start. And the order start is just simply here to reset the rotation just so that way when it starts back up, it all spins the same direction. And this does not have any moves after it. So making sure that this is a stopping point, that it will not re-trigger. That way, this is a nice resting spot for it to be set at for when we trigger the on screen, like so. So as you can see, it's going through. Now it's on the animate, then it'll do the order off. At the end of that movement, it turns off and it goes to this order start. And because this is only 10 milliseconds, you're not gonna see the eyeball pop up. To bring this message part on, if I go to the order and go to filters, this is where I set up where the, fill, where the message can come on or off. So if there was a message attached to my alert, it will swing out like this. And I have it to where then if somebody left me a message for that, it will come out and then it'll go right back as soon as the animation is over. And that's just an idea of what you can do to at least acknowledge on stream when somebody orders a shirt from you or a hat or whatever. Or you have the additional ability then if somebody is to subscribe to your fourth wall subscription, you can make an announcement about that, hopefully driving more people to want to do the same. <laughs> Out of all the merch stores integrations, this is by far my favorite. If you're having any issues setting this up on your own and you need more explanations or you need a little bit of an idea boost, drop into my Discord server. Link is in the description. I am more than happy to point you in the right direction, troubleshoot with you. It's just part of what I do. I love helping people make creative things. So I hope you enjoyed this quick little tutorial. I've got more coming for you on so many other topics. I'll see you on the next one.